Hey, good morning, friends. How are you? It's Julie Hamilton with Life Builders, bringing you simple tips to build a strong and healthy life. I'm trying to stay out of the light here. Let me scoot over. So I hope you're doing great. Congratulations to the Astros, right, for winning the World Series. And I mean, I was happy for them because it's they've just gone through Hurricane Harvey. They've already had this terrible thing. And so I was really happy that they were able to win this, get this win and and I think it's going to like really boost their spirits a lot. So, hey, congratulations, Astros and Astros fans. And their losing streak was way longer than the Dodgers anyway. So I'm happy they won and broke that. How's everybody doing today? I hope you're great. We're going to be talking today about a story about can one person really impact the world and how can it happen? And as soon as I read this story, I was like, I am sharing this story on video you guys have to hear this story. It's from the book, um, One Question um, by Ken Coleman. And this book is basically, he asked all these people one question. It includes Malcolm Gladwell, Seth Godin, Tony Robbins, Tony Dungy, Pat Summit, Dave Ramsey, Jimmy Carter, John McCain. There's like a bunch of people in here. Um, Andy Andrews, Tom Ziegler, Henry Cloud. Anyway, he asked all these people one question and this is their answers. And he's talking to Andy Andrews, who is a you know New York Times best-selling author, and he asks them this question. And the question is, um, he says, you know, he's talking about you study people, and he said, is there a story that sticks out in your mind that shows the powerful impact that one person can have on the world? And here's the answer that he gives, and I need you know track with this story because it's so good. He said, Norman Borling comes to mind. Most people have never heard of him. He won the Nobel Prize, Peace Prize for his work hybridizing corn and wheat for arid climates and saving 2 billion people from starvation on our planet. So 2 billion people have, are saved because of this guy's work. And he says, that's truly incredible. But by reading biographies and understanding the difference we can make, I know that it wasn't really Norman who was responsible for hybridizing the corn and wheat. It was a guy named Henry Wallace. And Henry Wallace was vice president of the United States under Franklin, President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Okay, you gotta stick with me and listen to this. Roosevelt had three presidents, whatever, during his four terms. The second one was the former secretary of agriculture, a guy named Henry Wallace. When Wallace was the vice president, he used the power of his office to create a station in Mexico whose only purpose was to hybridize corn and wheat for arid climates. And so then he hired the young man named Norman to run the operation. So it was Norman who won the Nobel Prize, but when you think about it, it was really Henry Wallace who saved two billion people. Unless, maybe, it was George Washington Carver. Do you guys know about George Washington Carver? If you don't, you're gonna find out right now. When George Washington Carver was 19 years old, and a student at Iowa State University, he had a dairy sciences professor named Professor Wallace, who on Saturday and Sunday afternoons would allow George Washington Carver to take his six-year-old little boy, Henry, on botanical expeditions. So it was George Washington Carver who took this little boy, this little six-year-old boy, and put a vision in his life about plants and what they could do for humanity. It was George Washington Carver who poured into little six-year-old Henry Wallace long before the boy ever thought about being vice president of the United States and pointed his life in the direction. You want to join my broadcast? Let's see. I, I just got this thing from uh, Rose. <laughs> I said you could join, so come on in. Um, and George Washington, and here's the point. George Washington Carver developed 266 things from the peanut that we still use today and 88 things from the sweet potato. But when you think about it, by mentoring a six-year-old boy on a few afternoons one summer, he just happened to save the lives of two billion people and counting. And I want you to think about that because here's this one person, this 19 year old kid, and all he's doing is taking this six year old boy out on Saturdays and Sundays, looking at plants, sharing his passion, sharing his knowledge, sharing his wealth. And George Washington Carver never saw that he saved two billion people from starvation by planting the seeds of passion in this six year old young man. And I want to encourage you when you are 
passionate about something and you are sharing your passion with other people, you don't know who you're influencing. You don't know what they're going to grow up to be, what position they will hold, what authority they will have, what ideas they will have to impact the future. And I just encourage you this morning that don't underestimate your influence and your ability to impact the world just because you think, oh, I don't have that many friends or I'm only from a small town or I don't have that many followers or I don't have this, I don't have that. It's not about the numbers. What it's about is the impact and it's about the influence that you bring to the table and really pouring yourself into people's lives. And you know, like I said on, on Tuesday's video, we want them to go faster and further than we have. We want to be the shoulders that they are standing on so that they can get the vision for way far down the road, way far off. And we have to be founded, we have to be planted, we have to be foundational, to have a good foundation, to be those giants that can stand tall and let people stand on our shoulders. So this morning, I don't want you to underestimate the impact that you can have. George Washington Carver, he had no idea he was going to save 2 billion people from starvation besides all his other inventions. But down the line, that is what happened. So you guys are powerful. You have a powerful influence. And don't go to your grave holding on to the things that should have been shared with the world. Don't go to your grave keeping silent. Don't go to your grave keeping your passions inside and the teaching that you have inside and the wisdom that you have inside. We need to be sharing that stuff. It's so rich and it's going to change the world. So I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome weekend and have so much fun and just keep pouring out, you guys. I and mean, we need to get refreshed too, but we have to share what we have. And you may never know the impact that you're going to have. George Washington Carver was long dead and gone before these 2 billion people were saved from starvation because of something that he did. And that's legacy. We're leaving a legacy. Oh, Ken Coleman, thank you. Oh, thanks for this book. It's amazing. So I'm so glad I could share it with my with my viewers and watchers. And, and so thank you so much. And so anyway, you never know how you're going to impact the world. And let's just keep pouring out, you guys. Love you all. Be awesome leaders this week. May your minds be fierce and your hearts be strong and your spirits be very kind. Have a great weekend, you guys. Love you. Bye.